Maybe. <clears throat> uh, welcome. We're here for the uh, March 28th, 2023, Lowell City Council Transportation Subcommittee. Uh, Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Council Rook. Here. Council Janess. Here. Council Noom. Here. Three present. Uh, thank you, Mr. Clark. Joining us uh, this evening is our uh, Assistant City Manager and DPD Director, Giovanni Rose Baez, and our Transportation Engineer, Liz Oldman. Uh, we're here today based on uh, Council Mercier is here as well. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is in regards to the dozens and dozens of motions that have been filed over the first 15 months of, uh, of this council. Um, and um, obviously most of them are dealing with traffic and stop signs and line striping and so forth. Um, all these have been referred to our uh, transportation engineer and our DPD department. Uh, and this evening they're here to make a presentation um, in response to uh, the motions that have been filed. And with that being said, um, Liz will go to you. Okay. I don't know if you can see my presentation. Is it? There, yeah. there we go. Okay. Um, so I'm here to talk to a little bit about the shared streets and spaces update. Um, this isn't uh, consistent with our complete streets policy that the ooh, that the city council passed a few years back. And essentially the goal, I'm sure you've seen this um, graphic a number of times, that the slower a vehicle is going, the better chance a pedestrian has of surviving a collision with a, um, with a vehicle. So the goal of any shared street project is to reduce vehicle speeds, reclaim roadway space from the vehicles, and increase vehicles' awareness of other roadway users. So we have initially identified 10 streets um, to try some implementations. And through the process of iteration, of design, and looking at everything, two of the streets came off. Um, Wedge Street and Campbell Drive were not um, determined for this round to be um, viable, but we did add in Foster Street, which we had had a number of complaints on. Um, you'll see we're trying to spread around at least um, some of the surrounding, the neighborhoods surrounding downtown. Um, we are putting a, sh a installation in front of City Hall, but that's kind of outside of this, um, this scope. These are the areas that were identified to be used by um, to use the $50,000 that was awarded the city by the state to um, purchase materials to implement traffic calming trial installations throughout the city. To date, we have collected data at all of the locations except Foster Street. That's underway right now. So we have kind of preconditions, and then we'll take data when the installations are in place to see if everything's working. So there are two types of installations that we are doing. Uh, horizontal deflection, which is actually vehicles have to go over something, or um, vertical, that's vertical deflection, and horizontal is when you have to move out of the straight line path, which is the horizontal deflection. So the speed humps are the prime example of vertical deflection that we're doing. They're able to be, um, temporary speed humps are able to be purchased, and implemented in a temporary condition. We're going to be on Billing Street between Aiken and Bridge Street, Foster Street between Middlesex and Princeton, and 6th and 7th Avenue between University Avenue and Mammoth Road. So just, this is a lot of information, but all I really wanted you to note is the 85th percentile speed, which is over 30 miles an hour. That's the speed that 85% of the vehicles are going at or below. So it's generally good with the speed limit being 30 miles an hour, which it is right now. When we lower the speed limit citywide, that's, it's going to be higher. So we're, the goal of a lot of these implementations is to get people down to 25 miles an hour. Not below, not, they're not going to be crawling through the streets, but they are going to be at a consistent 25 miles an hour. So we will be doing 
four-week trials for these, the speed humps, they are, this shows a seven-foot one, but the ones we are purchasing are actually 10 feet. They're 10 feet wide, they're three inches high, and then the width of the road, generally. They don't go all the way to the curb, so we can preserve some parking on some of these roads and um, to not impact drainage. So we will install three speed humps on Billing Street and Foster Street. We are also installing um, curb extensions with flex posts on Billing Street at the intersection with Barkers. And then we will relocate those six um, speed humps to 6th and 7th Avenue, just to save us some money and to spread around the, um, the trials. Um, so this is what they would look like in a permanent condition. They're made of pavement. But you can see that people can, are able to park on them or near them. Bicyclists are able to tra traverse them pretty easily. And the fire department was OK with these type of installations. In, um, in areas where they weren't a primary fire route. So they were okay with 6th and 7th and Billings and Foster. So the three first locations that we are doing um, horizontal deflection are Havila Street and Fairmount Street and Woodward Avenue. We are doing some, um, so Havila Street is between Remington and Dancus. Excuse me if I'm saying that wrong. Fairmount between Mansur and Birch, so the length of Fairmount, and Woodward Avenue right by the park. Again, higher speeds on these roadways in the existing condition, oh, well over 30 miles an hour. So on Havila Street, we're going to try um, two mini traffic circles. In the, they have nice wide intersections in, um, in Belvedere, and they're very pretty, but they are wide, so people tend to go a little fast. This is um, a temporary condition, little speed, um, mini roundabout there. We are trying um, chicanes on Woodward Avenue. There will be some impact to parking, so that will have to be, um, We'll have to see how the residents like that in that vicinity. Um, but this, that's to really make people get out of a straight line path on Woodward. And then on Fairmount Street, Fairmont Street, excuse me, we are actually reclaiming some of the space. There's not a lot of people parking on Fairmont Street, on street. So what we're doing is we're actually extending the sidewalk, it's called. Are moving the curb, so we will be per, we will essentially be narrowing um, Fairmont Street to 24 feet wide instead of right now it's 34. So um, you'll reclaim a lot of space for bicyclists and pedestrians. So in the future condition, you might have parking, you might have a nice bike way um, that you can definitely. Um, put in some green space in a mini roundabout or the chicanes. I just think that those are really pretty kind of fun looking um, in the future if, if these things are well received. Um, Wentworth and West Six are our last two horizontal deflection areas. Um, this is Wentworth Street from Andover to Laurel and West Six um, right in the vicinity of below, Belu Street, Bilio Street, and Dollard Street. Um, the uh, fire department did not want any his, um, horizontal deflection on these streets. These are primary streets for them, so that you can see how fast people are going on these streets right now. We are going to be doing some um, alternate side of the street parking on Wentworth and some bump outs and some median flex posts on West 6th. Um, the upper right picture is actually an installation of the alternate side parking in Chelsea when they have done a permanent condition. So um, it's really worked well there for them. So our schedule is we're finalizing the plans and we met with 
fire department and we're going to, we're notifying, I had a meeting with engineering and so we're, and DPW, so we're going, just going around in-house this month and next month and we're gonna begin purchasing process to obtain the equipment. May, we'll be noticing abutters either through neighborhood group meetings, social media, we're gonna flyer, we're gonna mail, we're gonna make sure everybody knows what's happening um, with lots of feedback potential. Um, the end of June is what we're targeting for the installation of the speed humps and the horizontal deflection. At some point, end of July, early August, we'll relocate the speed humps and we'll uninstall before school starts. Um, and then um, we'll be collecting data through July and August and we'll be able to present findings to the subcommittee um, if things worked well, which ones worked well, which ones didn't. And then we'll be able to move on from there to permanent installation um, funding. So that is my presentation on this summer. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, I just uh, have one quick one. So the timing of it, it, was that done because school's not in session? Correct. I, I've tried to do it all in the eight weeks that school is not in session, um, just so we don't have conflicts with school buses, parents, um, things like that. I wanted the, the traffic to be a little lower traffic volumes to be a little lower while we're trying. Um, speeds also tend to be higher in the this, in this summer because the traffic is lower, so I figured we'd get a good rating on how they're working sure. during that time. Great, and I know uh, Council Mercy has a subcommittee at six. Council, do you have any questions at all? Any comments? Yeah. Elizabeth, thank you so much. That's a wonderful presentation. And there is something that we should be doing, and that's it. In the city of Lowell, there's so many speeders, and we need to have the calming in the city. Uh, I know I'm a little guilty of that at times, too. I shouldn't say it, but I am. Um, I also am concerned about the, um, the uh, calming uh, island in front of the senior center on Broadway. It looks like it was started and discontinued and abandoned, and I wish we could work that into the mix somehow because people cross from the senior center into Market Basket, and, and a woman got very severely injured, so that's why that is there like that. People run over it, people bump into it. There's no nothing, it's just blah, and if we could just improvise with what you have there. Sounds good if you could work just that area as well into your proposal, I'd be grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Noon? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Manager, Mr. Chairperson, Mayor, oh my God. Oh, you're happy. <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, this is a great idea. Uh, I mean, this is the, uh, a plan that was passed a while back, uh, complete street policies, and now you pick it up. Uh, the right time for it. Um, I, I like all the proposed plan that you have. Um, and then I was going to ask a question with regard to the uh, the neighborhood, and you have it listed here as scheduled in May. I would suggest that you work with the neighborhood uh, group, uh, you know, through uh, um, uh, uh, neighborhood uh, coordinators and, and basically some of the street that is, uh, you know, in certain neighborhood and getting their input, you know, and see where. Uh, how they feel about it. I, I'm sure you know, a lot of these plans is really, especially the speed hum, um, you know, if those, even those are temporary. I, I'm sure this is in addition to the uh, 25 mile per hour that the council has passed on that ordinance. Um, that, is a, that is a step in the right direction. A uh, question I have with, with regard to the, um, the sign for the 25 mile per hour is uh, where we add on it and, and where we add on the sign as well as the educational campaign on that. We were waiting to do the educational campaign until we had a contractor under contract. So right now the sign um, installation um, contract is out for bid, so we should be get, I think it closes next week sometime, so we should be able to get under contract with a 
somebody to install the signs. And once we have that person in place, then the I've been working with the police department to um, do basically social media and and, and um, educational campaigns, um, you know, throughout the city for the at one you know for a couple months until it's actually started. It'll be installed, and then they'll give warnings for a while, and then they'll start enforcing it. So you, uh, you, you here, you did uh, pick a uh, 10th Street, um, you know, to try or to implement your plan for a a, a street calmness or traffic calmness. Um, suppose that this is working, uh, would you also add other street as well? And what's the cost associated with it? Uh, is there plans to? go out to uh, the state and looking for some funding um, on this? If the trials are successful, we'll own all that equipment and we'll be able to move it to other places next summer, say we can identify additional streets. Um, and then we would have to be, we could either go through the state or we could do capital funding or um, something. We could find funding through a number of maybe MassDOT grants to install permanent locations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No problem, Councilor. Councilor Jeunesse. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, through you to the traffic engineer, I really appreciate this pre presentation. There's a lot of exciting stuff in here, and I look forward to uh, seeing how it all works. Um, my only question is just the these these items, that, the temporary ones that we're going to be putting out, the speed humps and the flex posts, how long do we expect those to last? Are, is it multiple seasons, one season? How long do we expect to get out of, say, a speed hump, temporary speed hump? Um, I'm hoping the a lot of places in the south will put them in because they don't get snow, and they'll leave them, right? And they'll last a couple, three years. So I hopefully we'll be able to get two or three seasons out of them. Um, as long as they aren't um, destroyed in the process of having them, you know, installed somewhere. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I think this is this is all all great, and if we can, you know, work it into the budget to uh, buy two, three sets of these over the next few years, so we can we can uh, you know do more streets at once, then that'd be something I'd like to see. Um, but thank you for your work on this, and once again, I look forward to seeing it implemented. Okay. Um, if I have one, if everybody's, if there's no other questions, I, and if I have one more yeah. minute. Okay. Sure, you can have all the time you want in a second. It's yeah. a quick question I have. So what would make the department decide whether to put a permanent structure in or to say, you know what, it didn't work as what we thought, let's try it somewhere else. Has that, are those parameters been set yet? If we see a good lowering of speeds in a location and the feedback from the adjacent property owners is positive generally, then we could move forward. I envision moving forward. If the if people are like these chicanes are terrible, get them out of here within a week. Then I'm obviously not going to. Yeah, you know, either going to try something else or not implement them. Obviously, I, mean, I think the four weeks is good because you know the first couple of days are there. I'm sure everybody's going to freak out and lose their mind. And, you know, because change is always right. difficult sometimes, right? So I think the four weeks is actually pretty good, and you'll get a real. Um, you know, hearing of what, you know, positive, negative, or otherwise. So um, thank you very much. And if you have anything else you'd like to add, please go ahead. I just wanted to let you know that um, the Andover Street Visioning um, Project has started. We're underway with a um, consultant. They will be doing a kickoff at the Belvedere Neighborhood Group meeting at their regular meeting in May. Um, and then we will be having a virtual meeting for the rest of the um, city to add their comments to. So look for that. Um, we also are starting the Complete Streets Prioritization Plan update, and we will be the consultant for that will be presenting a wiki map, which actually people will be able to go on and select their neighborhood or even their house and say, there, you know, I'd like something done here. Um, and so that's, we'll be looking for that launching in June. And Westford and Stedman signal design contract is under contract now, a consultant is under contract, and so we'll be moving forward with that signal design. So I just wanted to give you some general transportation updates while I was here. Awesome, <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Um, quickly, Sandy, any first impressions? I know this one of these areas is right in your uh, neighborhood. 
I would love for her to be at our meeting on April 5th um, to let the neighborhood know with all the construction we're going to have going on there to start with St. Louis, it would be nice if the neighbors just kind of got a heads up on, you know, no more 60 miles an hour, it's 25 now, especially in the school zone. Mm -hmm. They fly down our street and there's just no speed limit. So, yes, I would love to see you. I already wrote it up on my card for you. So the schedule, just so you know, if I may, because it's not, not going to happen until the end of June. So would you rather have it come probably in May? That make more sense closer to the date? We only meet quarterly. Oh, okay. All so right. So that's why. Sure. No problem. April, right. I'm glad you spoke up. Probably the construction has already started. So that's why I thought I'd like to try to get a head start. Sorry. Thanks. Right. I have been in touch with George from the Centerville. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. A couple different ones. Yeah. So we'll, yeah, you have the information now. Sir, I didn't say anything? Good. Happy? <laughs> awesome. Great. Yeah, um, you know, I think it was all when, you know, you've, you've, when you came into the position, you obviously you were buried with, with things that have been sitting there for a while and, um, and also with added uh, motions and, and things that have been put on your uh, a desk. And, you know, just personally speaking, I, I think you've been terrific, a uh, real asset to the city. Um, this is a really terrific presentation. And I think that once people get used to it over the first week or so, um, they'll see the real benefits of these. Um, that along with the 25 mile per hour speed limit, um, I, I think it all helps improve the safety. I think your first slide you had um, that showed, you know, the the risk, the deduction, of, the reduction of mm -hmm. fatalities or, or injury with with uh, associated with speed limits uh, was well placed, uh, and I think it's just a good um, forward thinking idea for the CEO law. So uh, well done, thank you very much, and I, I know you have the support of, of this subcommittee. Uh, we'll bring this to the city council as well uh, to go over it and uh thank you once again thank you very much i appreciate your time awesome um councils anything else no more, thank you all good Thanks. all right um with that being said i guess so we'll um probably come back again in a couple of months maybe right before the rollout of uh of the program just to do another you know cam media ad campaign ad, something like that uh, as far as as a subcommittee and then we'll uh come back after that with some results Awesome. Deputy Chairman, Mr. Clerk, um, motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. So move second. Thank you. Thank you. Pox. Oh, you don't want to go over the um, port of Pox handbook again?